1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Daniel, and we're going to be wrapping up our study on Daniel pretty quickly. We're already about halfway through the 10th chapter, and there's only 12 chapters. So today's reading comes from Daniel 10, verses 15 through 17. And remember that this is after Daniel has received the vision. He's been praying. He's been fasting. His body is very weak. And then we see this passage from Daniel, Daniel 10, 15 through 17. When he had spoken to me according to these words, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless. And behold, one who resembled a human being was touching my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke and said to him who was standing before me, O oh my Lord, as a result of the vision of anguish has come, before, uh, has come upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can such a servant of my Lord talk with such a man uh, such as my Lord? As for me, there remains just now no strength within me, nor has any breath been left in me. Now, one thing that's interesting to point out about this particular passage is that Daniel is completely drained. This is not surprising. Daniel has just gone through 21 days of fasting. He has presumably eaten nothing substantial. He said that I have taken in no tasty food. Now that may mean he's eaten no food at all, or he has eaten some things, but he's not eaten anything that would slate his hunger very much. So he's basically just trying to stay alive and, and absolutely nothing more. And this is somebody who has been praying for that entire time in intense spiritual and physical praying. And so because of that, he spent... Daniel is essentially saying, I am, I am too exhausted, and then once I felt the, the vision come upon me, that did even more to me, and I am completely drained. I don't even really have the strength to engage in conversation with you anymore. And so when you look back at that passage, he talks about his strength has, has left him, that the vision of anguish has come upon him, he has retained no strength. And he is saying that there is no breath left in me. He's having trouble breathing. He's so tired and hungry. And I want you to notice something. That when you look at that and sort of cross-reference it with other experiences that people have had close to God. When you look at Moses and his face shining so bright when he had seen God's face that they had to put a veil over his face just so they could see him. That you look at how he had reacted to the burning bush. That when you look at how David had prayed and fasted, asking for forgiveness after the sin with Bathsheba had been found out. You see, when people really put their spirit on the line, when they really pour out their heart to God in the Old Testament, and in the New as well, looking at the way that Jesus prayed and fasted, and some of the indication we get from John in Revelation as well. That their strength leaves them. That they are spent when that happens. And I think that speaks to the amazing power of God, but I think it also speaks to the way that they are, the links that they are willing to go to. I think that that's important and maybe something that we've lost a little bit in our society. When was the last time that you prayed to the point to where you were done and you were like, man, I, I am spent. I am tired after praying. Because I know I don't do that nearly enough. And maybe, looking at the way that Daniel prays and prays fervently, we look at and admire, and rightfully so, the things that Daniel said in his prayer, the things that he was able to accomplish, his gifts. If we want to pray like Daniel, we have to pay a price. If we want to pray like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane or in any of the other trials where he went off for hours at a time to pray with God, if we want to be able to pray 
like some of the famous prayers in the Scripture. We have to be willing not only to expose ourselves completely to God and to be completely open with Him, but we also have to be willing to forego our own comfort. And sometimes it helps to do a little fasting beforehand. I think if we want the deep kind of connection to God that they had, we have to be more willing to put ourselves on the line as they did. Stay the course, friends. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.